Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Rome Total War Remastered here today on the channel. I can show off the Barbarian Invasion DLC Remastered. So, we're going to be playing as the Romano British here today. If you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like. Subscribe if you're new. Leave it on the comments, feedback, and suggestions. Got to say a huge thank you to the Creative Assembly for sending me a free early access code of Rome Remastered and making this Let's Play possible. So a huge thank you to them, their community team, and of course, Feral Interactive. So we're going to be playing as the Romano-British here today, one of the new emergent factions. Very hard, very hard, of course. We need to hold 14 settlements, Londinium, Eboricum, and Ivaricum. Now, I want to quickly read this disclaimer at the bottom of the blurb here, because this is really quite interesting for one of the new factions. So, the Romano-British are classified as an emergent faction. So, what this means is that events will be simulated leading up to the faction's appearance, and the world will begin in a slightly different state each time. Now, I've done a couple of tests with this, so what this means is every single campaign is going to be different. That where you spawn in Britannia will change every single time. You can either spawn up in the north of Scotland, Wales, or England. Your faction leader will have a different name along with his religion, either being pagan or uh, Christianity. Same with his army build it can be changed as well and also the time period you spawn in sometimes i've spawned in three years later from the start date and various other factions have expanded and conquered additional territory so what this means is depending on rng you can get a really harsh roll with a poor general poor traits or get a really good army build <laughs> and a really good general. It, it's really going to change up the campaign and I really do like the sandbox nature of it. Now looking at the unit roster for uh, Roman Britannia, we do have British legionaries but we don't have a crazy amount of infantry compared to the Eastern and Western Roman Empire. However, we do heavily rely on Sarmatian auxilia and really decent uh, Graal knights and warlords. And other factions, we've got the Huns, Goths, more Sarmatians. We've also got the Saxons, the Franks, and the Vandals, the Celts, the Sassanids, the Roxolani, the Slavs, which are another emergent faction. Uh, same with the Ostrogoths, the... Uh, Burgundy, Alemanni, Lombardi, and Western Eastern Roman Empire, and the Berbers, of course. Still playing on the remastered version, not the classic. Graphics and gameplay settings wise, in my Scipio Roman campaign, we are playing on 100% campaign map vibrancy. This time, just to mix things up a bit, we're going to put it on zero just to change things and I do really quite like the unit color scheme on realistic. I play on ultra unit scale and we had unit variation on my Scipio campaign so we'll turn it off on this one just to change things up. So without further ado let's start the campaign and I'll see you guys on the campaign map. Okay loading in here now 363 AD so it's actually a shorter start date, so we've spawned in the middle of the Midlands. I guess this is like where Leicester would be. So Mandu Brackus, that's his name. Three-star commander, that's not too bad. Off the drop. A new faction arises, the Romano-British. And a powerful faith, paganism there. We have 15,000 in the bank. So, let's have a look at our army build. So. Unfortunately for the age RNG, that's not very good. 49. He's only got a couple of years left in him. He's three-star command, which is quite good. Ah, uh, this could be a problem. So he is Christian, but he has a conversion by force. Hmm. So that means we're probably going to have to go Catholicism in this campaign, which 
does make things a little bit tricky as the western part of the map it is a lot easier to go pagan from what I found so we have 225 turns to hold 14 settlements including Londinium and Aboricum just want to have a quick look at the family tree yeah so there's no one else there for the Romano British Mandubracus what a name. I kind of like the sound of that. We're going to have to be really careful with him as well, however. Because we've only got one faction leader. If he dies, the campaign's over. It's GG. Okay, so... We've got a decision to make. We could potentially declare war on the Western Roman Empire. But I'm feeling more inclined to potentially go after the Celts in the north. Unfortunately, we're three turns away, so it is going to take us a little while to travel there. But we've got three Graal Knights, some Warlords, some Sarmatian Cavalry, some of King Arthur's Chosen, I guess. <laughs> we've got some crossbows, not too many infantry units, which is a shame. But, so be it. So we'll move them north. So that, I, I kind of wanted to go with a pagan playthrough. Because the Eastern Roman Empire is a lot easier to convert all to Christianity. Because most of the East is actually Christianity. Um, you got to sort of pick one in a Western Roman Empire campaign. I need to go through the stats for the temples. Because I can't quite remember remember them off the top of my head exactly. But I, yeah, uh, I think just because he's Catholic now, that means his heirs are probably going to be Catholic as well. We might have to go there, but um, from what I can remember in the base game, most of Britannia was pagan anyway. So we're not losing any money, which is good because we are technically a horde faction. But we've got to be really careful here as we move into Scotland. So in Dal Radia, we'll quickly get those mercenaries. Just wanted to make sure they weren't locked to England versus Scotland. Like there wasn't two mercenary pools. So we'll declare war against the Celts here. And let's start the siege. Now this is very hard, very hard. Of course, that's already a hard campaign. So got some Pictish warriors there. War's been declared. I think trying to conquer the Celts territory in Scotland and... And Ireland is probably the play over then dealing with the Western Roman Empire just yet. Because they are still a really powerful faction. So let's bring those mercenaries in here now. Mercenary Gallo Glass. We've got some Sarmatian archers. They're probably going to be the, the best out of those mercenaries. So we've got three out of five. And it's the faction leader dressed now. Which will make things a little bit harder, trying to deal with that cavalry unit. But we should be alright. We're hemorrhaging a lot of cash here now. So inside, three units, plus the faction leader. Alright, let's fight this one on the battlefield. Five-star commander as well. The auspices have been taken, and gods be praised! Nothing can be found to deny us victory today! With such portents, we need only march upon the enemy. They think their walls are enough to stop us. They should think again. Those people have never met us on a field of battle. After today, they will flee at the sound of our approach. So, let your battle cry be, Victory! Victory and glory to Rome! Okay, let's start the deployment, and I'll show you guys off the units. Now, please do take into consideration that I'm using an early access build of the Rome Remaster and Barbarian Invasion DLC. So, there are some things that are subject to change. And they're constantly uploading... Uh, they're constantly updating the builds as they come out as well. There's been like a couple of decent patches even just from the start of my Skippy I Roman campaign to this one, so but rest assured they are tweaking stuff right up until 
release. So let's have a look at the Romano British General Unit. Now I am using a realistic color scheme. I've only used that in my campaigns because I actually prefer it than the than the vanilla one. So here are the Grail Knights, very heavy cavalry. These guys look like uh, <laughs> these guys look fantastic. They do look like the children of Balthazar Gelt or Aurelian potentially. We've got the Sarmatian Auxilia, who are probably our best unit there. Some stock standard infantry. British legionaries, which are going to make up the bulk of our army build. It's a shame we can't get the later auxiliary, like the Western and Eastern Roman Empire. That would really help us out quite a bit. But I guess that's what makes this campaign hard. Crossbows, and then our mercenary summation archers. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to arc my crossbows up over the walls. I think my Sarmatian horse archers probably have to carry us for this one. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up all my infantry to the battering rams. We'll approach the small barbarian Celtic town in a three-pronged attack. One on the left-hand side, one through the center. And we'll move you to the right of screen in a moment. Now, um, Rome Remastered will be available to the general public on the 29th of April, 30th for Australians. Uh, the only reason I say that as a disclaimer, because I've had people in the past <laughs> get confused with release dates. Because, so for you people in the UK, Americans... Europe and North America, you'll be getting Rome Remaster on the 29th of April. However, I live in Australia, and I guess us, <laughs> us Australians and Kiwis live in the future. So it's technically the 30th when it comes out over here. So I've had people <laughs> go, oh, he's Australian, so maybe he's factored in the calculation for the time zone difference. So I, I think it's just easier to say that way. So you guys know when the game comes out. This is a bit of a clarification. So, we'll just quickly try and reform here slightly. Loose formation will be good if they're going to pepper us with archers, but I don't think they don't have any skirmishes in this build. We do have to stay clear of those arrow towers. So this might be the best bet. But check out these purple dudes. <laughs> They've got the spawn of Thanos or something. Alright, so very little armor. We'll just try and continue with them. Yeah, so unfortunately the firing arc of these crossbows can't get it up and over. They can in like Warhammer. But maybe not. Maybe we just need to pull you back. So we'll allow the Sarmatians archer unit. Let's try and whittle them down. We've got some of the general's bodyguard there. And these are like a Celtic pike unit. Further back in the town square, just want to get some cinematic shots for you guys and show them off. Oh, hang on, we're getting a... Oh. <laughs> Pull back. I tried to turn off the heart and, and sort of show off the units as, the best, as best I can, but it does sometimes cause me to lose some unnecessary casualties. There are five there because they just charged that. I was not expecting that. They took the initiative to push out and charge and not cop the arrow fire. I like that, I like it a lot. We'll send up the mercenaries first. The two-handed gallow glass. Bring them down, men. And... We might even be able to skirmish them there. Just hold the fire. These guys are about a foot taller than you. Whoa, watch out! Bring them down. Whoa! Whoa! Ah, <laughs> uh, we won that. Watch out for his crazy spinning stuff there. Oh my god. Okay, so I just thought I'd talk about content-wise on the channel real quick. So, still continuing on my Skippy Eye Roman Let's Play. So, here today I'm allowed to play on the Barbarian Invasion DLC. So I'm going to play for roughly around about an hour here today, as the Romano British. I am tempted to make this into a full Let's Play. 
However, that depends on you guys. We could use, sort of do it as a bit of a first look as well. But I think here today, we'll try and take the entirety of Britannia. Win or fail. Because there's four settlements on the island. Maybe five. So we'll try and deal with the Celts. Then throw out the Western Roman Empire. What's the remnants of it? And if you guys want to see further episodes. To hit those 14 victory conditions. You probably need to take essentially the Western Roman Empire. Spain definitely. Gaul. And potentially the Italian Peninsula. But... I'm still running on a restricted content window because I'm only allowed to show a certain amount of time and, and episodes and stuff. But then in a couple of weeks time for release, the embargoes drop and then I can upload as much as I want. So at the plan at the moment on the channel, I'm really focusing just on the Rome remaster, sort of taking over the channel over the next coming weeks and potentially months. I can move in those Grail Knights in a moment, but here's another look at them. How fantastic do these guys look? Can't wait to use them. They're probably going to be the bread and butter of this campaign. Using our very limited infantry where we can. And just tearing and bringing down the Roman Empire with cavalry. Yeah, anyway. So, Scipio Roman campaign. I want to try and focus and finish and wrap that up. I think that's where I'm going to focus the majority of this. But I was like, I could have uploaded another hour-long part of the Scipio campaign here today. But I felt, as I have the opportunity to play the Barbarian Invasion DLC, I thought I'd show you with you one of the emergent factions. So I am uh, tempted to do more. I'm thinking maybe replacing the Scipii campaign eventually in the future with a Western or Eastern Roman Empire campaign. Just continuing on, I think that would be good. At the height of the Roman Empire, we move on to the Barbarian Invasion DLC. So I am open to doing more episodes on the... Romano-British campaign, but I'll, I'll get this campaign to a point where, if we don't, we could end it, but I think I want to play more. So far, I'm liking what this campaign has to offer. The unit roster is good. You could tech... I think this to play this in the base game was a little bit more difficult than just going through the strat files, because I think, didn't you have to... I can't even remember. I think I downloaded a save file from somewhere, because you have to wait for them to spawn and then control the faction, so... Instead of changing a little bit of code, playing as the Romano-British in the original was a lot harder. But I do like the emergent faction thing, because I spawned once in 360 AD, just testing out the campaign, just to see, because I didn't entirely comprehend what an emergent faction means. So, the beauty of these emergent factions is that is every single playthrough is going to be different. You, if you see this, oh, I'm going to start my own Romano-British campaign. You could get a very pagan general... Poor command, a fantastic army build, or vice versa, and you might spawn bang smack in London, which might force you to go with the Western Roman Empire earlier. We will eventually go to war with them, but dealing with the Celts here, so they're moving up some units. We want to try and form up with that, but we might just be better off to hit those pikemen as they try to intercept us. And I've still got the Macedonian campaign to deal with as well. I've only done one episode of that, where we uh, took the majority of Greece, and we'll, we're about to start with the Roman invasion of of Greece. So we definitely should go back to that campaign as well. But there's so many campaigns and not enough time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So at the moment. After this video, I'm going to continue to try and finish and wrap up that Scipio Roman campaign when I can. I haven't forgot about the Macedonian campaign. We'll come back to that in the future, but that could be potentially um, a little bit further down the track when the full game gets released. And then after the Scipio campaign, I'm thinking of going on to follow the Scipio campaign with... A barbarian invasion DLC faction, which could be this. I don't feel like it's a natural progression. I feel like, like the, the Skippy. I, I kind of wish you could migrate. Actually, like saves. You know what I mean? Kind of like with Paradox, you can have those grand strategy where you can just like continually port your save file over from games to games. Like, how cool would that be? That I, I have no idea 
to mod or how to make games. So I can just imagine how hard and complicated it probably is. <laughs> so say we've taken the historical borders of the Roman Empire, right? In my Scipio Roman campaign, everyone's got the last name Scipio. And then you can just port that save to Barbarian Invasion and then have it instead of... Because all the family members have the same name. I think it's Flavius. Like the Western and Eastern Roman Empire all have the last name Flavius. How cool would it be if it was Scipio? You know what I mean? Like in this alternative timeline. So we've got to be careful here because this is the faction leader. Um, I want to try and skirmish out where we can. We'll try and set up a three-pronged attack to try and push and hit the town square. Uh, they're pushing out there, which is annoying. We might just have to try and general snipe him. It's just a shame the range on those wasn't the best. They've charged there. We'll try and swing around. If we can somehow get the general, we'll be fine. But head on charge. Very hard, very hard. The AI gets so many bonuses. Downhill as well. We could potentially lose a couple of units here if we're not careful. Yeah, that's unfortunate that they got caught. Luckily it's the crossbows because we're probably not going to be using them this much in this campaign. But just throw everyone in there. Also, I do need to figure out how to fix the cursor. It's not a Rome remastered bug. Which I've been aware. But it was an OBS problem first that it's been patched, but I actually record with GeForce. For my videos. I find it's much more reliable for me personally. from what I found compared to OBS. But I might need to investigate that a little bit more. Okay, so we managed to capture the general there. Just need to watch out for these last two units. So, so far, we've put the mercenaries to work. They've taken a decent amount of casualties and our tier one spearmen as well. Let's try and wrap my cavalry around and try and get them into the town square. Move them further up. And we should be able to occupy and colonize our first piece of territory in Britannia. We want to put some roots down and start converting the local populace. Okay. Yeah, I want to try and form up and cycle charge if we can. Yeah, we might not be able to because of the path finding here over the wooden squared town square. Yeah, just go in there. I want a decent charge. So unfortunately my spearmen have been completely wiped there. Which is an issue. Okay, not the best of cavalry charges to come in. But we should be able to work with it. Man, that just shows you the power of faction leaders and heirs. So Mandu Bracus. Ap Padan Virid. <laughs> I just think we'll just call him Mandu. Mando! <laughs> Brackers. In war we must always leave room for strokes of fortune and accidents that cannot be foreseen. Publius. They've also updated the backgrounds here as well. So here is a screenshot for the Alexander DLC. I did have a choice between the two. Um, I could have really played both. Um, but I've decided to play on the Barbarian Invasion DLC. I did put a poll to you guys. What's your favourite? Which I probably agree. I think it is. Mine as well. We had a Steam achievement pop up there. I don't know if I'm allowed to show those, so I'm just going to have to edit that out. So we've got a couple of options here. We can occupy or exterminate. Wait, what? How are the Celts destroyed? Well, we can't enslave, because we haven't got any territory. But we'll take that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe they lost island to someone. So, 
looking here already, I would imagine the majority of it's pagan, yeah. So it's only 7% Christian, and then 93% pagan. Now, unfortunately, due to our faction leader and compounded by his traits, we're in a bit of a religious troubles here. Yeah, so I just want to quickly double check and read those stats specifically. Yeah, so it's actually a bad trait, yeah. Faction leader sharp. Yeah, so we really don't have a choice because of him not to go Christian. I kind of want to go pagan in this. Yeah. Minus unrest as well. So we're going to have massive problems if we don't do it. It's doable. It's just arguably a lot cheaper settlement-wise to go pagan in the West. You just sort of got to pick one and stick with it. Um, so I guess we'll get a ship so we can sail on over to Ireland and try and take it. We'll get a diplomat for trade as well and maybe even just trying to replenish and get some more additional units. It just depends if we have the money. Finances might be a huge problem early on. But we'll just have to see. So you have three options in Barbarian Invasion for religion. Sol Invictus, Mithras, and Catholicism. So let's go through the stats. From what I can remember, if you want to go for a full Pagan Let's Play, Mithras is the way to go. And you only have one choice with Christian. So Christians get population and public order. Mithras, Mithras gives you the uh, experience for your units. Sol Invictus is more public order as well. I think I'd prefer Sol Invictus, the sun god, <laughs> over Mithras. But yeah. So if you're going to do an Eastern Roman Empire campaign, I'd probably recommend... Christianity, and really with the West, you got to pick one. Uh, so, we're in huge financial problems. So, an estimated balance next turn is 5,000. We're not going to be able to afford this. Oh, we're hemorrhaging massive money because of our units. We've got the tax rate on low to deal with the public order. Okay, so we're losing 2,000 per turn, and we're dealing with the public order issues. If we put it up super high... Yeah... It's because we want to try and tack, we want to try and keep as much population in the city as well, because we want to try and tax it and later develop it. Just this force conversion is the problem. So it's mostly our units that's what's doing it, because we do have five units of elite cavalry: one, two, three, four, and then the mercenaries as well. We might have to disband some of these guys. It won't be too bad if we have to, because it does go into the settlement population, so it technically won't go to complete waste. Yeah, I... Because I'm surprised how much it's costing to get this army, because I guess when we're a horde, not taking it, the settlement was probably better. Um... I guess we get rid of these mercenaries, because they cost way too much. 442 per turn. So maybe, in hindsight, it was better to go against the Western Roman Empire, potentially because they would have richer cities than the poor Celts to the north, who are a weaker enemy. Yeah. So, it's arguably, if you want an easier time, I guess, go against the Celts. But the thing is with the Western Roman Empire, man, they could completely start flooding units back over to Britannia. If they want to retake it. So, we're only... We're still losing a lot. 2,000 still. Okay. Well, we might as well give it on low. Just get the public order. So, then it goes up to... A little bit higher. Because stuff hasn't loaded in, I guess. Alright. Let's end the turn and continue. Because we have to keep a... We have to maintain a decent military presence. So, we're not going to be able to take Ireland or any of... The Western Roman Empire territory. We have a candidate for adoption here. He looks alright. 25, two-star command. 
problem is now, do we have enough money to finance a general? Because it is a little bit deceiving. You do actually have to pay for your generals. I do quite like the look of... Divishicus. I think that's how you say his name. Yeah. I guess we'll adopt him. Because if we are going to push to Ireland, we will need someone to protect our new capital. Yeah, so it's still 3,000 of turn we're hemorrhaging. But at least, just in case he dies of natural causes, the faction won't completely end as well. And he can maybe govern if we leave. Okay, well... I think it's time to go to Ireland. Mandubracus. He can sail on over and we'll leave my new adopted son, Divishicus, to govern for now. I will probably change my capital of Dal Raida. to London or something later on. So, we want to try and disembark on Ireland as quickly as we can. So, there does seem to be a rebel army outside. Decent. <laughs> We're coming and disembarking with a skeleton crew of an army. I just need to see how big it is. Hopefully, there hasn't spawned like a huge army. Yeah, normally the Celts would probably own this. It's quite surprising that they don't. Yeah, so, 3,000 a turn still. We need to get trade. We've got peasants coming along because we can't afford those infantry. We have a diplomat here now with Fla uh, whose name's Flavius. We'll try and negotiate with the Western Roman Empire. We might need to consolidate for a fair few turns, so it still might be advantageous for us to get trade rights with them. There are other factions near us, the Saxons, the Franks, Maybe even Burgundy. If they rise up. I think the Alemanni are there as well. Maybe some other Germanic tribes. Okay, so putting it up to normal isn't going to fix the financial issue. Alright, let's quickly negotiate with the Western Roman Empire. For trade and map. Okay, it looks like trade rights are the only things... That are, they're gonna work. Uh, trade is still one of the best and most efficient ways to make money in this game. So getting our ports developed as quickly as possible is a must over food and probably roads, I think, early on. Right, so we've got a couple, couple of options. We can siege out Tara if we want. Two peasants, two swords, with this. <laughs> it's going to be a tough one, because we've only got one battering ram. Because we've only got, like, two units. I think it will be enough. The cavalry units are going to be the difficult ones. Not so much the skirmishes or the swords there, either. But, let's fight this one, and hopefully we can take... Ireland. Portents are bad, my friends! But I do not care. I know yeah, that it's I just against rebels. Right. We don't need to listen to this one. Let's move you there. Drop the ram. We'll put these guys in because they are more well plenished compared to the yellow 92. So I think what we'll do early on, kind of a similar. It's I think it's the same map. It's just more snowy. In this one. So what we'll do, we'll get our mercenary Sarmatians to push up and try and skirmish. Keeping us well away from those arrow towers. And we'll just speed things up. So hopefully they might be able to snipe a general unit here or take out some of the units. We'll, we'll put up the speed. You don't need to see a skirmishing too much. So there does seem to be a... These are Celtic units, essentially. They're just a rebel faction, which is unfortunate for them. British legionaries. Our mercenary swords as well. 
There are some of the new HD textures on the ground there. Those Grail Knights, even though we did have to disband one of them, which is a real shame. Mm. I felt bad about doing that because, <laughs> like, we're running out of money. We're hemorrhaging cash. We were so fortunate to get the RNG of... Just getting those units spawned. Like, it's going to take us so long before we're even in a position to recruit those units manually. Okay, I think what I'm going to have to do is just let my guys sit here and enable fire at will. Allow them to take the initiative, pick their targets, because I just attacked there and it made them just go a little bit crazy. Trying to get the shots hugging the wall. It's like they don't want to arc if I give out the attack order. So just moving them slightly back and forth. It could be potentially the skirmish mode. I don't know. And they seem to be running back and forth. Okay, they're too close to get their shots off, so move about here. Hmm. I don't know why they're doing that. We might cop a little bit of arrow fire going here. But it will be worth it. If they can start peppering them with arrows. They might need a little bit to warm up. There they go, they're shooting again. Because the more we can reduce with our hit points, the better. Well, re reduce them with our arrows. Thereby reducing their hit points. And then... <laughs> it's going to be difficult with my infantry. So I've only got two. I'm really going to have to probably chuck in the faction leader, which could be a problem for this one. Might have to risk him. Because we're hemorrhaging in cash. <laughs> we must go forward. We cannot be a page in someone else's history book. I've never really studied this sort of time period in the sort of, I guess like, yeah, the Britain period. Because isn't there like the whole King Arthur, I don't know too much about King Arthur, so maybe I should research it a bit more. But it's like the story of King Arthur and... Merlin and stuff. I think there were room. I think it's like there's no. It's too. It's too long ago. So there's no way to definitively know. But I think it wasn't King Arthur, a descendant of the Romano-British, supposedly, or was one. He was a king that helped throw back Saxons and various other invaders. It's also been a long time since I watched that movie. <laughs> the 2004 one. With, uh... Oh, what's her name? Kira Knightley. Alright, let's move it back. Now, my British legionaries... Are going to be able to skirmish a bit here. Oh, these guys are just going to absolutely... Trash those peasant spears with their peeler. Fantastic. Now we're out of ammunition with our horse archers. My god, they've been the MVPs of this first episode. Okay, so we'll try and move everyone in. Cavalry on the left hand side, British legionaries on the right, and we'll just hope they don't block me off because if we try and form up, okay, they instantly charge there, which is really annoying. Okay, try and swing everyone in. Drop a morale buff there. 60% slightly within our favour. Hopefully we can pull a result on this one, otherwise we're going to have to... I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to have to lick our wounds, maybe go into financial debt. Oh, my infantry's losing here. Okay, we've managed to snipe the general. 
which has probably just won us the battle there, as my infantry were just getting trashed by him. Their peasants are now in a full retreat, and now we've mopped up the thing. Oh my god, that was way too close for my liking. Okay, so we've got some pikes here. So, I guess let's move up the remaining units of my infantry. Hmm. There might be enough space here for us to flank, because we want to try and cycle charge with this cavalry. Because I don't know if this infantry is going to hold for very long. Like, can we somehow, like, bait that in and then try and... Uh, and then, hmm. There we go, that's better. They've turned. Oh, they're fleeing. Well, that worked. In a <laughs> really a, an orthodox way. Okay, we'll take that. We'll turn them down. It worked. We wanted to hit them from two sides. If it was because they were retreating, so be it, I guess. Okay, sweet. Right, let's move you here. General there. You gotta be careful when you chuck in family members and faction leaders. You gotta be prepared to lose them. Like that, because they are a little bit squishy in Rome Total War, of course. And the remaster. So, you're getting a little bit too close there for my liking. Now, we gotta be careful when we push into the town square. Oh, they're coming out here. Because units are unbreakable, and particularly on this difficulty, they just get so many buffs. So you really got to be careful and meticulous of what units you hit. So we should be able to buy, we should be able to push through and bypass those peasants, but we can. Just waiting for our additional infantry, which are exhausted and depleted from that cavalry charge. Okay, they're no good. Try and quickly grab as many of them before they pull back. Some of the cavalry units have fled to the town square, but we should be right. Just to send it, full send it in there in a moment. Okay, let's just speed things up a little bit. Give everyone a little bit of a breather. Let's move our British legionaries in. They might be able to get two, three peerless shots off. Looks like just the one, and the cavalry is going to charge. Well, we'll call a rally just in case they capitulate that last 45. As the cavalry unit comes charging in. And that's it. We can uh, the, the countdown's been initiated. 555 against 962. British legionaries, 121. Casualties sustained. Ugh, yikes. But we have victory. Valor is superior to numbers. Yes, I agree with that one. And there is Scipio Africanus, or a Scipio in general. I do like the new backgrounds that they've added with the key up. But now Tara is under Romano British occupation. So I guess we'll enslave and send the 6,000. Well, actually, 6,000 pop back to Dal might actually really stuff it up, so we might have to exterminate. I didn't realize it was 6,000. Crikey, that's a lot. Radio. So, Mandibracious should be okay to sit here in Ireland. We're still hemorrhaging cash, which is annoying, and Divisicus can stay back in the capital. Okay, so, uh, we'll do the same thing here. We'll break down the... Religious building, and we'll try and build a small chapel uh, where we can. Now, you do take a conquest hit and a public order hit at the same time, so it, you can wait a little bit if you want, but I think we've got a big enough army, even if it does rebel, uh, to manage. So we'll get some peasants in, in Tara, just because we... Um, only can afford them. Essentially, the town watch unit is actually better in Barbarian Invasion because the public order has slightly been changed. 
Yeah, so in the original Rome, peasants in town watch are the same level of public order repression. In barbarian invasion, it's half. Peasants in barbarian invasion do half as public order repression as they do in the vanilla. So you are actually better off to get the cheapest infantry unit you can find that gives public order. But we are slowly but surely converting the local populace. We are hemorrhaging cash, which we do have quite a bit of at the moment. Yeah, so 2,000. So we've probably got a leeway of two turns. We might be able just to... Yeah. We might have to soak up our debt, I guess. Take it on the chin for a bit. Okay, so my public order here in my capital is fine. We can put it up to high. Get more peasants there. We're just consolidating our position. But even skipping a couple turns ahead, we're still um, losing a lot of cash. Um, we did just get a random adoption, which is annoying because it's costing us even more money here. Drew Stan. He looks alright. Young, two-star command, better than nothing. But we really didn't need him. I guess he can act as public order. <laughs> and governing one of the settlements. Because we probably want to look to march against the Western Roman Empire soon. Divisicus has sailed over to Ireland as well. Just to help out his adoptive farmer. But all three of them are Christian. I don't know what the chances were of potentially getting a pagan leader. But all three are Christian, which is good for me. Make things easier. Okay, so now we're seriously hemorrhaging cash. And we've got to make our move against the Western Roman Empire. We are able to tax the populace a lot more, which is good, because they're slowly coming over to our side. In our capital, we're on very high, but we're still hemorrhaging so much cash, man. Mandu, um, Mandu is moving, and so is another army. I do want to send my diplomat over uh, to Europe, so we can get some trade. So in Londinium, there's quite a large army. If that army comes north, I don't know if we're going to be able to beat it. And fortunately for me, it looks like there's only one unit in the Borokum. We will get a relation hit there. As we are trespassing, technically. Franks are at war with the Western Roman Empire. Okay, we might be able to use that to our advantage. The war with the Franks, but we're... <laughs> 7,800 in debt. Maybe if we can sack the city, we can make it back. But let's go to war with the Western Roman Empire. They could send that army up instantly. But we should be alright. Now, we can't afford to go in too much debt. But I've exposed my ship here and diplomat. Which is a problem. But the Romano-British go to war. Religion-wise, we've actually managed to flip our two settlements quite quickly. Our capital is taking a lot longer, though. So let's end the turn and continue. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. Okay, we've been intercepted there by a rebel fleet. I was thinking maybe attack it and it might give us some more movement to withdraw it. Hmm. We might not be able to get that diplomat over, which is a shame. Okay, we just need to go back and forth, just trying to get as much money as we can to keep us ahead. Okay, so Mandibracius against Palacus, the horseman. Oh, I probably should have manually played that one because we lost 400. And we're only getting 2,500 from that sack, which is annoying. That's alright. Uh... Okay, so we've managed to claw back the deficit to only 200 per turn. Oh, Eastern and Western Roman Empire have broken their alliance. Yeah, so the Western Roman Empire does look like it's falling. We can put it up to very high. 
I wonder if that changes it. It's 12% Catholicism. Hey, yep, 100. Not even that, though. Okay. When the turn to continue, we'll see if the Western Roman Empire react and push up north. Doesn't look like they have, but unfortunately those rebels hit us. So we are finally making a profit. However, we're in a deficit of 7,000. <laughs> so it's going to take us, what, 75 turns to make that money back <laughs> at this rate? And we don't even have a proper standing army. That general adoption was annoying. So we'll try and get our diplomat over. Cross our fingers and hope. Um... Okay, nothing too interesting. Diplomacy-wise, it doesn't really matter. We need to focus on conquering Britannia. So, there's only four settlements on the British Isles for us to take in bar the Barbarian Invasion. Because there's... In some portions of the European map, there's less settlements. Like, isn't there, like, only one settlement in Sicily now? Compared to three in the vanilla version. So we're making a net turn income of a whopping 67 denarii. Woo! 67 gold. Oh yeah. And we're basically out of infantry there. We could maybe disband more. I'm going to send these 19 units to scout ahead because I want to see if that army's moved at all. It might have. No, now we're in range. Because I was going to say, we can't actually build a watchtower to forward scout. So we're just going to have to use this unit there for us. So, one, two, three, four, five. This is, this is a lot. There's too many infantry there. Hmm. It's going to be a tough one. I'll just consolidate for a moment. We'll skip a couple turns. We'll burn them. Because we kind of want them to attack us. If they could attack us in our fort, that'd be great. Sassanids and West Roman Empire Broken Alliance. We are still in a budgetary deficit, but we are making money. We just need to open up more trade lanes. And if we were to go around demolishing buildings, is it even worth it? Because it's only like 800. Like, what's here? Temple of Mithras. That's only 300 as well. I guess we'll get rid of this ship, because we don't actually need to send armies over to Europe just yet. So, we'll get rid of that. We want to eventually get rid of the Temple of Mithras as well. I guess we can do it now. Drop that slightly. 36% to 64. Hmm. We might have to march on Londinium. As it doesn't look likely that they're going to push north. Maybe they're focusing on too many other stuff. I don't know. Let's send our diplomat, Flavius, Flavius, to Denmark, Hamburg, northern Germany, to try and find some allies. I thought we might have run into the Franks pushing. Okay. Alright, I think it's time to strike the Western Roman Empire in Londinium. This is the army. We'll move up, just in case that army's moved. The reinforcing one, no, it hasn't. Okay, so, I guess we're just going to risk it for the biscuit. Let's siege them out. We have found the Saxons to the north. No Franks. Let's see how they react. So, they have attacked us here. Okay, so that first army's very manageable. This second one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then more archers, cavalry. Ooh. I'm actually going to with tactically withdraw from this one. I don't think we can win it. We've got 587 to their 2,000. We're outnumbered nearly 4, 5 to 1. I think we are better off to withdraw and fight them on the open field. Oh, so they didn't run us down, but they've head straighted to Uboricum. Okay. Well, we could push to Londinium, but they probably just attack us again. I think we march and then get that reinforcing army. Yeah, because we can't attack it in one turn. If we could attack it in one turn, it might work. <laughs> one rebel fleet blocks my port, and it, like, really reduces our income. Our trade with the Romans is gone, but we have managed to open up trade with the Saxons. I'd like an alliance, but I don't think they're going to give it to us. But the Alamani, 
And Burgundy are up there. Okay, so this is more favourable for us. Even though we're outnumbered 4 to 1, basically. It says 50-50. I think it's well, going to be a lot harder than that. Alright, let's fight this one on the battlefield. They stand alone! No friend has come to this place to die for them! Does this not say something about their honor? They're standing among nations? Our task today is a noble one. To preserve the town and its people. They have brought more men to this fight than we. So much for their much heralded courage. Ha! Much heralded by them, that is. Our horsemen are strong, but then so are the enemy spearmen today. A little care and judgment will be needed. I fought these people before, and now I thirst for revenge. Today we shall slake our thirst for blood. Today is victory day! Only a fool cares for omens and portents, no matter how bad they may be. We make our own destinies, and we are not ruled by the flight of some damn bird! Be of good cheer! Our comrades are marching to our aid even as I speak! Brave Romans! Prepare to defend yourselves! Okay, let's get stuck into them. Now, this is going to be difficult, as our infantry are massively depleted from that order resolve. And we're going to have to heavily rely on our cavalry and be quite meticulous in our approach. Even they are a little bit exhausted. We might actually have to chuck our general unit. So, essentially what we'll do... It was, we'll make the archer group here. We'll make three groups. We'll make the actual cavalry offensive on our left hand side. We'll have the center column of infantry, and then we'll have the skirmishers and the depleted cavalry units. What we don't want is to chuck them in into the main counter. Um, just sort of cycle charging and, and main cavalry unit, the surrounding army. Because if they flare, it might cause a rout. Okay, now fortunately for me, they have marched north without a general. And we do have all of our generals here. Yeah, so going onto the battlefield, it's 60% in their favor. This is going to be a tough one. This is make or break. They're moving their cavalry unit forward, which seems to be their general, which is good. If we can draw him out to a overextending position, we might be able to catch him if we're lucky. We'll get my reinforcing general unit to try and hit those archers further at the back. So, basically, for them to... The thing is with Rome Total War, if, if they've got a front flat line, if you slowly but surely start going around their flank, they try to compensate and match you. Okay, we're hitting them on the side. That actually might be an alright charge, even though it's against infantry. So pull back. Yeah, because as you can see here, look at this like main line trying to compensate, which would be good, because then we might be able to hit these guys from behind or, and the sides. But I'm trying to wait for an opportunity for their general. So we actually managed to throw back that infantry unit with just Drewstan. Okay. We'll send in Man Mandibracious. And... Divisicus. I think I was saying Bracus at one point. <laughs> I'm so used to my... <laughs> Rakath campaign that I've done recent memory. Mandibracious. Bracus. I did deliberately call him Mando though. That's <laughs> a joke. Oh, and we've managed to snipe the general here. Good. We're full sending into them. Good. Now what we just need to do is pick apart, allow the infantry to hyperextend away from their other units and we'll try and just surround them. But Drew Stan has done all right there. Going in. Okay, let's move up slightly there. Okay, so, we're still not out of the woods just yet. 
this battle is still very much losable. But it's a, a very hard campaign from the, the set out. I agree with that statement. You've got to deal with so many factors. And it just gets compounded with the higher difficulties. So luckily for me, we actually got the RNG of a lot of cavalry. Which, look, I'm, I, can, I can manage with a lot of cavalry units. I actually prefer infantry. I think I'm better with infantry. Um, it just sort of depends on your playstyle. So far in this battle, we're working it. We are... Yeah, we are manageable. Would we have won this if we had five British legionary units? Maybe not. Maybe the cavalry is carrying us here. Okay, so we're just trying to peel a unit around here. So they were, so as you can see there, they were like matching up to us. So we'll flank with one unit and we'll try and get everyone else to hit one on the rear and then just try and surround them. Now the problem is we could lose our faction leader and heir. Fortunately enough for me that now that we've got three generals, so even if we do lose one, it's not the end of the world and the faction. Okay, so that unit's probably gone there. And we'll try and hit some of these units further down here. The battle still isn't won just yet. But yeah, you have to deal with uh, a huge... financial deficit once you start taking territory. And you really have to use mercenaries to your advantage and try and squeeze out as much effort from your units as you can. So in hindsight, was it better to potentially go against the Western Roman Empire? Maybe, because their territory is probably more built up and worth more. I haven't dived down into the specifics of the settlements, but you would, you would assume so, wouldn't you? The reason why I didn't go to war with the Western Roman Empire first was because of any potential further attacks. Because look, you can take Londinium if you rush it, and probably Aboricum. But then you've got... so. Then you probably have to stay and hold. Like, if you want to push north against the Celts when they start attacking, you're going to have to expose yourself to potential invasions from northern France. We might be able to get those archers there. But so far, we've managed to neutralize and destroy the general unit. We've nullified one of their archers. If we can get the second, that would be good, because we don't want them to take pot shots of us, but... Overall, if we can win this one here today, this is probably one of my... <laughs> this is probably the most difficult battle I've probably played in this series. Just because of the stakes. Definitely of this series. Maybe even of me playing Rome Remaster in the chat. And we've won it! Let's continue to run them down. One, two, three, four, five, six units still in play, but they've routed. Oh my god. <laughs> that was a good fight. That was a tough one, my god. Okay, let's try and quickly run them down as best as we can. And let's get some... close-up shots. So here today... Divisicus... and his father, Mandubracius... and the hopes and dreams... of King Arthur... and a Romano-British... kingdom... of come to flourishing <laughs> as we have taken Britannia officially here with that battle because there's no way they're going to be able to defend the siege and sack of London well I guess they could if they send another army over let's just hope they don't do that though to blunder twice is not allowed in war a Latin proverb yep there's a barbarian there a crazed Gaul So, Aboricum has been saved. Oh, I'm actually kind of lucky that they didn't attack us there, I guess. Well, I guess it made no difference if they attacked us outside London. Okay, so let's move south. We've negotiated with the Saxons. Let's push east. Who's this? Uh, there's a general there. We'll try and... Negotiate with Burgundy or whatever they're called. Oh! The Franks have taken it. I guess the Franks. They are blocking my port in Ireland, which is annoying. Franks. 
How do you do? Trade, accepted, map for map, potentially. No. Hmm. We will give 100 times. No. I want map information. Yeah. No. Couldn't come to an accord. Shame we can't find that diplomat again, but I guess we'll just go that way. Okay. Let's just be careful as we move south. Okay, so they've only got four units in there. We should be able to take it. Um, can't put the taxes up there. And now we're losing money. Okay. Because of the port. Ah, oh, right. Touche. Well, if we're not making a profit, there's no point of angering Ireland. I guess. Okay. Welcome to the top of the ten. Let's take Londinium. Now, unfortunately here, the Saxons have moved up an army. Typical. We've been stretched so thin that we have a decent amount of territory, but our army presence is atrocious. Close victory. <laughs> that could have been bad. Well, ah, it's going to get us back into a positive. That's good. That's perfect. Because I like the population, but getting our finances in check is good. All right, perfect. And now we're making... 3,000 a turn, basically. Now, alright. Well, unfortunately, guys, I think it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed episode 1 of my Total War Rome Remastered Barbarian Invasion Romano-British Campaign. I am tempted to do more episodes, but it just depends on you guys. Depending on the likes, comments, and subs for this video i am open to do more but if not this is not too bad of a place to end it we could push down and throw basically destroy the western roman empire or we can just sort of chill and relax in our conquered kingdom in britannia but thanks guys i've got more Scipio and roman let's plays coming up and i will do more let's plays on rome remaster so stay tuned for more content o uh, coming over the next days and weeks Thanks once again to the Creative Assembly and Feral, and I'm going to play the outro now. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already with the bell notification on. Let me know in the comment section down below feedback and suggestions for the video, and feel free to leave a dislike. If you want to support the channel and follow me on my social media links, they are all linked in the description below. We've got the series playlist that you can access. You can also have a look at my gaming and recording equipment. If you want to get yourself some cheap games, check out the links. You can support me on Patreon if you want. Channel members are available. Use creator code SimpsyTotalWar on the Epic Games Store checkout uh, to flick me a couple of bucks. We've got Twitter, Discord, merchandise, Facebook, Steam Group, Instagram, Twitch, and Google Plus links all in the description below as well. But above all, guys, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simpsy. Much love from Australia. Goodbye.